Once a criminal attorney, Victoria Konkowski now travels the world seeking healing methods and modalities. Today we're talking to her about taking part in metaphysical experiences, including energy medicine in hospice, ayahuasca in Peru, San Pedro in Ecuador, past life regression, acupuncture, Reiki, shamanism, to name just a couple. It's an eye-opening discussion on adventure and growth in mental wellness. You can reach out to Victoria and, and other practitioners for a one-on-one -on -one session by going to the Karma Hub website. Let Karma Hub assist you on a magic journey of exploration and wellness. I really hope you enjoy this discussion. Click that like button, please, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much. Enjoy. The theme that keeps coming up is, you know, a lot of us feel alone, you know, like, you know, in my family, I'm the only one that I'm the weird one, right? You know, like, these are my weird things. Like, so, you know, I can't relate to my family about that. And, and, and if I do talk about it, a lot of times I'm made fun of, you know, stuff like that. So like that can lead to a feeling of loneliness, but I think what's important to, you know, and why, it, why this in particular, this video is important and talking is important is to let people know that you're not alone. There are other people, maybe they're not in your immediate family and maybe you're not lucky enough to, you know, be able to have friends, uh, you know, that are right there that you can talk to about it, but we are out here. Um, and you know, you're just, you're not alone. You know, you're not alone in that experience. And I think that's important. She said, I want to tune you. Can I explain to you how this works? And I was like, sure. Um, and then that led to my first Reiki attunement. And then that was an experience where I was actually like healed from something right there in, in the attunement. Right. It, yeah, like profound, like that, you know, a miracle, like th that's not possible, but it was, and it happened. And, you know, and I just kept on from there that when that moment happened for me during is when I knew I was like, I'm not making this up. This is the real deal. Right. Like as, as the vision finally opened and I saw like my planet and my people, my heart, my, the love that I felt was like, I mean, it makes me almost right now, I could get like emotional because I, I felt it. I just felt, and I was so happy there and my, you know what I mean? And like, and, and that's how I knew I'm like, this is real because I, it, it existed in my heart already. You know what I mean? Like it had, yeah. Right. Like it's not something that you create. It's just something you're pulling up something. Yeah. That you're remembering. We connected more back in like uh, 2018, um, and I knew you more as a, a attorney uh, that was that was Reiki attuned, and you volunteered in hospice. Yes. So I know we talked briefly the other day, and it, it seems that you've taken like quite a ride since that time, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, well, well, first of all, let's. Talk a little bit about your background. Are you still an attorney? What, what do you do? What got you into all of this magic? <laughs> right. Um, so I am still an attorney. Um, I have switched fields, though. So, you know, basically, I'm an attorney because, you know, it pays the bills. Right. And I went to school for it. Um, but I mean, I you know, I started out in my life, you know, thinking I was just going to be an attorney. I was raised, you know, Catholic. Um, my parents are super Catholic. No, you know, so there's no disrespect for, you know, Catholicism at all, but I didn't take to it. And I really didn't have anything spiritual going on in my life. Um, I was, you know, more logic, like everything was logic based. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, as life does, um, you know, it throws you wrenches, right? Monkey wrenches. And um, that happened to me, like right after I had uh, finished law school, um, you know, I would say, honestly, it was probably the first monkey wrench really I'd ever gotten in my life. I had had a really easy, breezy life. And um, 
So I didn't deal well with it. And um, I was just seeking, I was seeking like some answers. And um, that led me basically to reading a shit ton of books. Okay. And, yeah. Um, and a lot of them were memoirs. And, um, and, and then I guess maybe during the course of some of those, oh, and I read Pima, Pima Chandran, the, um, if I mispronounce her, her name, it's, she's a monk, she's a Buddhist monk, she's famous, she writes a lot of books, but okay. I read her book, which was about meditation. Um, and it was basically like, you know, a how to how to get started in meditation. And, um, and then I found out about Reiki. And I was like, well, let me give that a try. Right. 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 Yeah. Like, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. I'm right there with you. I mean, it's some yeah. weird stuff. And so um, I, I went to my, my first Reiki treatment and um, I mean, it, I was healed in some ways. I mean, it, there's just no other way to say it. I mean, all, you know, obviously all she was doing was channeling energy. You don't see anything. Right. Um, but uh, as she was performing Reiki on me, I, I felt physically in my body and I, I like looking back on it, I've, I've um, come up with this. So, you know how, um, cause this is what was going on in my life at the time. Um, you know how they say like, you carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. Have you ever heard that saying? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. So like, you know, as I was getting the, um, Reiki treatment and she was working on my shoulder area, it literally felt like it lifted. The, yeah. And like she had, she had a knife almost. And like, it was scraping out I mean, it was such a powerful release. I mean, I honestly, I gripped my arm at one point and she was like, she's like, try not to, you're having a release, just let it go. But that's how much I could feel being pulled out of me. Um, and so obviously I was like, well, I guess there's something to Reiki, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. I actually use that analogy a lot. One of my most profound spirit experiences, um, the first weekend I was introduced to all of this. This lady did some energy work on me and she said she would give me 30 seconds of her time, which I thought was oddball, right? Uh, not exactly extremely generous from my perspective at that time, but she may have given me 20 seconds. And I felt like the weight of all the stuff I was going through, I was in the middle of divorce, uh, real estate had tanked and I, that's what I do. Um, I do real estate. And uh, so there was a lot of stuff I was going through and it just, it went away. All that crap went away yeah. and I felt different for months. I mean, months completely. I, I could skip up the steps for the first mm -hmm. time in a long time, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I, I wouldn't, I won't, it, I was not, I've had, I've had an experience where I was actually like completely healed from something, but I, I wouldn't say that, that, it, that I was healed. I mean, I left there. I knew something had taken place. I knew that, you know, right. something had been lifted off my shoulders, but at the same time, my problems, I still had my problems that I was right. dealing with. But it opens um, your eyes to something mysterious, unusual, and helpful. Yeah. Yes, Exactly. I ended up, you know, going back, I think for one more treatment, I, you know, after the second time I went back, uh, she said, I want to tune you. Can I explain to you how this works? And I was like, sure. Um, and then that led to my first Reiki attunement. And then that was an experience where I was actually like healed from something right there in, in the attunement. Right. It, yeah. Like profound, like that, you know, a miracle, like th that's not possible, but it was, and it happened. And, you know, and I just kept on from there. That was it after that, basically. So how did you, did you then decide, Oh, I need to bring this to hospice. Oh, right. So, you know, that's just a, a part of, I think who I am. Um, 
I just always like to be generous um, with anything that I can um, and do anything that I can to help people. Uh, always in my mind, like if I'm helping, if I'm doing anything to help, like even as an attorney, um, you know, I, I went into criminal law, uh, which, you know, obviously has changed. That's tough. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, my initial thought was, well, if I can just help people, you know, help people who are charged with crimes, you know, then, you know, that's great. That's, you know, you're doing something positive with your life if you're helping others. Um, but anyway, so when I went into the to hospice, it was just, you know, to do whatever I could to help. Um, and, uh, you know, that was definitely Reiki is obviously still not well received from like the masses, right. I guess you could say. Um, but ch- the hospice of the Chesapeake, you know, they have it and they're they do well, re- you know, receive it in Maryland. I mean, really, like. They, they put out notices, you know, they want people who perform Reiki. Um, a lot of their hospice nurses do like a healing touch. It's very similar to Reiki. They just call it, you know, healing touch. Okay. Um, they would, you know, just assign clients to me. Um, uh, I, you know, I was just going around helping people and, you know, the reactions that you would get, um, sometimes it was no reaction. Sometimes it's, it's no reaction because I don't know if people have the words, right. Um, like what, what is it? What was it? What are you, what is this? But like, sometimes, <laughs> right. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But sometimes the reaction is, you know, just mind blown, you know, same type of reaction probably you've had. And I I've had from it, like, what? Um, well, you're actually going in and helping whatever the issues happen to happen to be. So, I mean, but people are really guarded when you walk in that door and you're working on their mother or grandmother. Right. And so if, if Reiki is not part of their belief system, what, what in the hell are you doing here? Working your voodoo on this, on my grandmother. Right. And right. Um, yeah, it, it's other, gotta be tough. Yeah. The other parts of that is that, you know, hospice will put out the notice. Like we, these are the services we provide and one of them being Reiki. So for them to even, you know, contact hospice and say, yeah, well, we'd be interested in that. There's something in their mind telling them that, you know, because they, first they speak to the hospice person who will explain, well, that's energy healing. So for them to even allow, you know, allow. So they do them- have to request your services. It's not yeah. like you're, you're issued um, to exactly. their person. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, they're trying something new. Um, and then, you know, for me explaining Reiki, obviously, because I believe in it so much and it, it is like who I am. I, I just have a general definition for people. I'm like, everything is energy. Like every single thing is energy. And I always use Einstein you know, cause everybody knows Einstein, right? Everyone trusts Einstein. And I say, you know, Einstein said it himself, every single thing is energy. Um, and I said, you know, I'm just here to help channel that energy, um, and to help, you know, channel it into you and heal you. Um, and that's really not a really great explanation, you know, for a lot of people. I mean, right. um, well, I, but- I haven't really come across a explanation that I, logically approve of yeah <laughs> to be quite I mean, honest if you do, please let me know because I, I I, do that, I mean, yes. yeah i'm serious because it, it's so like it is but, it, but that's part of the magic of it i mean when you believe something that's so unexplainable works as well as it does then it definitely opens the doors to other things that are also unexplainable yeah yes right? and so when people say talk about this craziness idea over here Mm -hmm. these days for me, I'm like, well, I believe in the craziness over here. (laughs) So why, why shouldn't I at least entertain the idea that this is legitimate on some level? Yeah. That this other craziness is legitimate on some level. Me too. Um, So it's given me a much broader view of 
how things operate. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just, it, it's, it's awesome living life from that perspective. Yeah, it is true. I, I, it is awesome living it, living life from that because really nothing's impossible, you know, like, so that, that is a good, I mean, that is really a good way to look at life. I mean, nothing, I mean, nothing is impossible. Um, it's crazy, but I mean, as I say it, I'm smiling because in a way that is truly what I believe, you know, nothing's impossible. Um, and it is, that is beautiful, um, to think like that, but, um, yeah, I so mean, so from, from there, um, it sounds like you've, I mean, you, you dove into exploration a lot further. I have a, a list here of different things that you have done since, you know, we were more connected back in, uh, like 2018, maybe 2019. I, I I lose track. Um, but so you, you've had a ayahuasca experience. I have, I would love to learn about that. I was curious actually about that years ago. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to Peru and explore that because I've heard magical things about it. Um, it never happened for me. Um, you know, I of course explored in other areas and that's fantastic. I cherish those moments. Um, but I am curious to hear what you did you yeah. know, on that adventure. Um, so, okay. So I too had heard, I had heard about it a long time ago and, but I was like, this is my very first thought. I remember it clearly. I'll never be able to afford that. Like, you know, like it sounded like it was too out of reach. Like it, it was something like just so expensive and just out of my reach. Um, but I remember also consciously thinking like that, that is something for me. And, you know, that's funny because like, if you put something out into the universe, I, I feel like we can basically get anything we want, you know, maybe not in the time frame we want, but like it, you know, if it's a legitimate thing, like, you know, I do believe the universe provides because I did say that. And then it came, it came back to me and it was affordable. Obviously it was affordable. I could do it. And I also did it during the pandemic. So okay. I mean, it was like, you know, there was nothing in my way. But um, so I found this this place in Peru. Uh, I'll plug it now, actually, because I, I do recommend it. Um, it's called the Ayahuasca Foundation. OK, so an American, um, you know, went to Peru. His name's Carlos. He, he's the founder. Um, he, he currently lives actually in Boston with his family, but he went to Peru, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. Um, I'm probably completely wrong about all the dates, but if you went on the website, you know, he tells his story, experienced ayahuasca and the healing um, abilities of it in, in every way. And was like, obviously I want to share this. Um, right. now, now to clarify, um, so ayahuasca is not legal in the States. Um, you know, I'm, we're, we're not telling anybody to do it, but if someone's on a journey and they want to explore it, um, uh, then, you know, we're, we're here to, I guess, inform about that exploration. Exactly. And it is legal in Peru. So, so it's know. illegal. It's legal in many countries, I guess. Yes. Okay. And also I think, and actually I know this, um, for sure, um, there are places in the States that are currently as a, as a re religious need, like, you know, uh, okay. because they're using it in religious ceremonies. Okay. I think ayahuasca is being used in the States legally right now for religious purposes only in certain areas. Yes. Not there all are areas. ceremonies that are taking place. I, I don't yeah. know the Whether, logistics of it, but right. I don't know if it's considered legal or not, or what the loopholes are, but you can find it ceremonies in the states right yeah. so i got on a plane and i went to per to peru um oh, oh well okay let me go back to carlos i'm sorry so um carlos who founded this place so he ended up staying in P peru after his ayahuasca ceremony trained as a shaman with the local tribe they're called the mashanu okay and like when i say tribe like legitimately like, these people you know they live amongst themselves in community off the land, no technology, you know, like it's still going on in, you know, 2022. Um, but, uh, and he, um, 
from there, you know, as, as he had trained as a shaman, he got the idea to open up the foundation, was able to secure funding for it, um, and has since done, done son and he done. So he's, and he's built this, you know, really awesome. It's like a little paradise, um, on the Amazon river, like in the wow. Amazon rainforest, you have to take a boat to get there. Wow. It's crazy. You know, you're totally unplugged. Um, and, and it's located right by the Mashanu, uh, community. Um, so anyway, that's what I did. I got, I got on one plane. I flew to Miami, Miami. I flew to Lima from Lima. I flew to Quito, um, uh, Iquitos in Peru. And then I got on a boat and headed up the Amazon river, um, for about 45 minutes. And then you're at your, your destination in the middle of the rainforest. Um, wow. it was really amazing. It was really amazing. And then I spent about a week there. So they have all different lengths, um, that you can, you know, go and, um, partake so did you it. take it just one day or a series of days? Did you like work up to it? Like a small dose to a larger so, dose? No, that's the thing. So you just jump right in the very first yeah. night. Our ceremony. That sounds really, really scary. Just, <laughs> just jump all in, huh? The first night was the first, the first ceremony. Um, I did this, I think it was the seven day retreat. So I ended up, um, drinking ayahuasca three times or four times, four times Okay. when I was there. Um, now this is the, going to be the not so interesting part of the story, but it's the truth. So if you, if you get a calling to do ayahuasca, if your mind is saying, or a desire, like I want to do ayahuasca, it's because ayahuasca, the plant itself is calling you. Like she wants you, she beckons you to come um, because she has something to teach you. So that's the saying, right? So um, anyway, the first night that we partook, it's no, Lauren, it's a legitimate ceremony. Like they really treat this. This is religious. Yes. This is, you're just going to get, you know, right. like you, you, don't, th- ayahuasca. Right. you don't throw back right. the ayahuasca. There's a process involved. <laughs> like pounding shots and like party time. You know what I mean? It's a ceremony. There's prayers. There's music. A big part of the ceremony is the music. And intention, I'm- I assume, is a very large part of everything you do. Exactly. Okay. So everyone has their intention. Now, my intention um, was that I wanted to know what the purpose of life was. That's what I wanted to know. That was my question. So I, um, I, you know, tossed back the ayahuasca, um, and, uh, nothing, (laughs) nothing. Okay. Like, and so I'm sitting there, you know, it's, the, the ceremonial hut is called a, a, a maloka, I believe. It's called a maloka. So I'm sitting in the ceremonial hut and like, you know, all my other, you know, fellow travelers are, we're in the circle, the ceremonial circle. And I'm like sitting there and I'm looking around and everybody's just going on that journey, right? Like full speed ahead. And I'm like, <laughs> and um, nothing. And then one of the facilitators walked up to me and was like, uh, you know, Victoria, (laughs) anything. And I was like, no. And he was like, all right, well, let's get you a second cup. So now how many, how much time had passed by before, like between the time that you sipped it to this moment in time you're talking about, I would say maybe an hour of 90 minutes, probably Okay, just about 90 minutes. Um, and for everyone else, it it took 20 minutes to, Full blown ayahuasca journey, right? Right. And um, I was so- watching this little thing last night, and it was a similar. He was talking like you were, and he's like, uh, absolutely nothing. Everybody around him was flying high. Uh-huh. Two hours later, it hit him like a ton of bricks. <laughs> and anyway, well, it was an interesting discussion. I wish I could share. Really, I mean, I would love to watch that video because I can relate to that guy, but. Now that you just said that, not so much. Okay, so then I take the second dose. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I'm taking the second dose of ayahuasca. No one else has taken a second dose, even the shaman himself, right? Because one dose is very powerful. And um, and this is what happened. I, you know, purging is part of it. It's a pur- it's a purgative. You know what I mean? That is part of taking ayahuasca. It makes you right. purge. And then 
directly there after the purge is when it kicks in. And um, so I take the second dose, I, you know, go back to my area and I felt tired. <laughs> like, let me take a little nap. I'm not kidding you. That was my, my thought. I was like, let me take a little nap now. And I did not purge. And I laid back. And next thing I know, I was in a different state of consciousness. Now, in that state of consciousness, it was like, all I can say was like a movie was on, unfolding. And it literally, like, I felt like it like came up on the screen, you know, like the Warner Brothers theme, like, dun, 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 like the movie was beginning, right? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, I swear, right. it really, it felt like a movie, okay? So I'm like, all right, I'm like, in. I feel like I, I was sitting like this. I mean, I was laying on my mat, but I feel like I was like, let's go. So I'm like getting ready to watch the movie and then the movie starts and I'm like, okay, like, what am I going to get out of this? Right. And Lauren within like three minutes of watching the movie, I was like, uh, this isn't my movie. It had to do with other people that were in the ceremony with me and I was viewing things that were happening in their lives. And mm. I literally, it was bizarre. And I literally, it, it, I don't, okay. As far as time, you know, I'm not positive how long it was, but I'd say it was only about 10 minutes. Like, and literally, so like, I'm like, movie, movie, movie. And then I'm like, <sighs> and then I'm like, and then I say, you know, I didn't say it out loud, but I said it in my mind. And I was really, I was speaking to ayahuasca, I guess you could say. And I said, this isn't even me. This isn't my life. You're showing me the wrong movie. And then bam, it ended. And then I was back into consciousness. I was back on my mat. And then that's when I sat up and I purged because hmm. I had purged after the second dose. I purged. And then that was it for the rest of the night. And then I was just sitting there the rest of the night. Really? Oh, my gosh. I mean, I wish it wasn't. It wasn't really. Really. I wish it was like but that is exactly what happened to me. Yes. And so then, hmm. you know, the next day, obviously, well, you know, I, I, I have heard of people talk about the experience of um, you're just connected to everyone. And yeah. in your case, you got connected to the people around you and you got to see their story and you didn't get your own movie. Right. I did not. <laughs> you got I other did. people's movie. I, it was crazy. Like, yes, I got other people's movie, but also like more than that. I wasn't invited in. I felt like, you know, such a like interloper, you know, I'm like, why? I don't want to watch their movie. Like, this isn't my business. But like the next day, um, one of the shamans, um, a facilitator, but also a shaman, you know, said, because he knew that I had done Reiki. I, I had actually given him a Reiki treatment. Okay. And um, he was like, Victoria, you're a healer. And he was like, so it makes sense. Cause you're open, you're open to all of that. And he was like, so you, maybe you were picking up, you know, on their healing process. Okay. And I was like, that kind of rang a little true. You know, I was like, well, maybe, maybe he's right. You know? Right. And he was like, you know, the next ceremony, you know, I would suggest, you know, kind of like shutting it down, you know, but closing yourself off to just try to have your own experience. Fair and enough. that also kind of rang true. Doesn't that mm -hmm. sound, you know that what sounds, I mean? Yeah. Yep. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, um, and so I was like, okay, that's what I'll do. I'll try that. You know, <laughs> I, I never, I never had anything from the ayahuasca. I literally, there was no insights that came to me. I got no information. I literally would, would joke. We'd all be at breakfast the next day. And I'd just be like, she doesn't talk to me. I'm not cool enough. You know what I mean? Like I was like right. the running, like, yeah, I would just make jokes. You know, everybody else was having mind blown. You know, all their questions were being answered. 
you know, life changing experiences. And I was just, I was just a, a watcher, you know, just an observer, really just huh. hanging. Out. Yeah. So what did you get out of it? I know you were very excited to tell me the story. And so far. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what I did get out of it was um, that. Yeah. Basically I know all the answers to all the questions that I seek and ayahuasca uh, didn't have anything to tell me, but the problem is, is that I don't trust myself. You know, like I'm always questioning myself, like, and um, a lot of the times, you know, we do have the answers. We just don't want to believe them or we don't trust ourselves, you know? And so we look to other people or other things to give us these answers, but they're all like right here inside of us. And it's just all, you know, all about loving yourself and trusting yourself. I mean, it's really cool that you're doing all of this. Um, I mean, I, I imagine it's, a little frustrating when you're doing like ayahuasca, you you know, you, you build yourself up for this life-changing experience and it, it didn't, it didn't really propagate like that, but it sounds like, I mean, when you really reflect, um, it sounds like you, you got some answers. I the answers, the answers are within you. Right. Exactly. And, and that's, it, it's, it's a really hard pill for so many people to swallow like i um i am told all the time that i just need to uh, trust my intuition Mm -hmm. and you don't i don't yeah and it's tough it is Um, i mean even even i you know i took three planes and a boat to go and do you know what i mean like this is something that like i strongly you know wanted and desired like but i mean you know, and even though I got that answer and like, even though I, I did already know that going in, I still have my days. I mean, I'm a human. I still have my days. I still have my moments. I, I have gotten better. And, and also, you know, I think with, I want to say with age, but it is, is with time, with age, the longer that we live, hopefully, you know, and if you're conscious, you know, I do, it does get easier. It does get just a little bit better. It's not perfect. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm still question myself, but I mean, I, I just compared to even a couple, you know, months ago or years ago, I do believe in myself more. I do have more, you know, just confidence and, you know, and, and, and that just makes it just a little bit easier, you know, just a little bit. Yeah. 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 And I, I kind of want to reframe what it is that I said. Um, it's not that I don't listen to my intuition. Um, I never want to put that out there. It's I, I don't listen to it enough. I am, however, learning to. Mm-hmm. And it, it's serving me well. Um, right? Yeah. Yeah. You did another uh, San, San Pedro in Ecuador. And you were saying that that is, so ayahuasca is a feminine energy or. Uh-huh. Yes. Everyone refers feminine. to her as a feminine energy. Yes. Okay. And San Pedro, I guess, is a, a masculine sort of an energy. Right. Because I had heard about it when I was, you know, doing the ayahuasca, like one of the facilitators was like, you know, listen, there's the male version of ayahuasca at San Pedro, you know, a little discussion about it. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that pops up and I'm like let me try it. Of course. I like to try anything, you know, especially if I can grow in any way from it. That is, yes. Yeah. So, um, I did, I, I went, I tried San Pedro. It works. Um, but, and this is the message that I got. And I'm, I mean, when I say the message, like it is the message because it literally reverberated in my ears for like four hours. And I was like, are you kidding me? Okay. Um, <laughs> and it was in Spanish. Uh, the message was escucha, 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 escucha. I heard it like that. It was like this, it was almost like a drum beat, like, you know, the music of the world. And what that means in Spanish is listens. 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 That's it. Okay. So I don't know. 
I don't know, Lauren. I don't know what that means. I haven't, I've yet to like, nothing has hit me. I do listen a lot. Like I like to listen to other people. Um, but you know, other than that, I haven't gotten, you know, anything profound. I mean, I mean, that's the message. Um, so you're kind I- of striking out with a lot of these, <laughs> uh, but, but ironically you highly recommend it. So that, it's interesting. Well, I, I mean, do. of course you're, you're witnessing other people having these profound changes, awakenings, awarenesses, messages, whatever. Yes. Um, I just, I, I, you know, you're right. I do highly recommend it. I am absolutely striking out with both of those ayahuasca and San Pedro, but at the same time, you're right. Like, but I am getting profound lessons like, okay, with the ayahuasca, I got nothing, but what I did get was I already know the answers. So that was something that I needed to learn. Listen to yourself, Victoria, trust yourself. You know, Um, I needed to hear that. Um, and then with the San Pedro, like I said, I mean, listens, I don't know, I guess that kind of goes back to the ayahuasca listens, listens, listen to yourself. Maybe, I don't know, but yes, like I, I do witness how it helps other people and, you know, and also, you know, just because something doesn't work for you the way you want it to work, you know, everybody's different. And like, I basically, I, I would want you know, anyone to know, like there, if, if you're not doing it out of fear, like you're scared, you know, then you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing to be scared of because I'm, I'm still, I'm here. I successfully, you know what I mean? Like, and I I think that's important for people to know because a fear does hold us back a lot, you know, going to Peru to do ayahuasca, you know, that's pretty scary scary. thing for sure. Yeah. But um, don't be scared, you know, like, you know, it's, there's, there's definitely, you know, safety there and people who want to help you and facilitate it. And, you know. Nice. Yeah. So I have on my little list here, it says past life regression. (laughs) (laughs) So where, where did you fit that in? Oh, you know what made me want to do the past life regression? I remember my sister and I. Um, we don't get along. And, uh, you know, I'd heard so many other people, you had done a past life regression and, you know, people like a lot of people get a lot out of it, especially with like relationships with people in their life. Like it it helps to explain. Right. So I was like, you know what, I'm not going to get anything out of my sister. I've tried to talk to my sister. So she's like, what, you know, like past life, you know, why would we have anything like, you know, that is not in her wheelhouse. Right. Right. So I was like, I'll figure it out. And then that way I can put my mind at ease and, you know, hopefully have a better relationship with my sister. So, um, I went in there thinking that I was, you know, that's, that, that was my purpose. Okay. So I went into the past life regression and that was the question that I asked, you know, they, they ask you the, the people, you know, I guess, what are they called? Hypnotherapists, you know, Mm, yeah, potentially. Yeah. Okay. So they ask you, you know, what are your goals? What do you, what information do you want? Um, But anyway, is that what, how you had the hypnotherapy? I'm sorry. Is that how you had past life regression um, given to you? Was it through a hypnotherapist? She, she because there's different ways to do it. I think she was also a hypnotherapist plus, I don't know what the other title is though, but yes, okay. part of it was hypnotherapy. Absolutely. Okay, fair enough. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so, uh, you know, as she's asking me, you know, she basically, she's like, go to the door, open the door. What do you see? Uh, I didn't see anything. It was darkness. Okay. Yeah. And so I was like, <laughs> so she would, she asked me like, what do you see? And I was like, nothing. And I, and then she was like, okay, we'll come back in. She walks me to another door. What do you see? I'm like, nothing. And I think that happened a couple more times. And you you can hear it in their voice. Like she's like getting, you know, she's kind of getting irritated. Right. Yes. <laughs> and um, and like also probably I was probably getting irritated, even though I was in a super calm state. I'm like, walk me to the right door. I'm sure I'm thinking that, like that, you know, I'm always trying to make a joke in my mind, but can we get to the right door lady? 
uh, I don't got all day. <laughs> but um, I don't know how many doors we ended up walking. Anyway, there was nothing there, Lauren. And finally, I mean, it. I, who knows how long this could have gone on? Maybe like 40, 45 minutes. She, I'll give her that. She did stick with it. Then she asks me the right question. And the next question she asked me was, and I don't have it word for word, but it was something to the effect, have you ever lived on earth before? And I was like, no. And she was like, oh, she was like, this is your first life, your first incarnation here. And I said, yes. And then as soon as she said that, and that series of questions came, Mm -hmm. I saw like it unfolded in my mind and I could see the world that I came from, what I looked like. um, And I could feel like physically in my heart, um, what it felt like, you know, living as that being uh, before I came to earth. Wow. Um, and, uh, and so then we, we, de- we dealt into that. So, um, you know, then she just asked me, you know, what, what's your, I mean, I could go on. So you know? what, what, what did you get out of that? Do you think? Yeah. So that, well, I mean, I didn't get any healing with my sister. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, um, what I did get out of the, uh, the, <laughs> the past life regression was, that, um, I mean, it explained a lot to me and, and in a way, you know, it made me feel not so like alone, I guess you could say, um, because Mm -hmm. I think like the reason I think one of maybe why I wanted to explore with my sister was because I don't feel like this, like sisterly connection that I see, you know what I mean? With like other people and it, it kind of makes me feel like alone, separate, distant, right. you know? Right, right. And, um, and, and I understood why I have that feeling, you know, like I've never yeah. traveled with my sister. This is the first time I've ever met her. This is our first life, life together, you know, we'll be our only life together. You know what I mean? So she's like a new person I'm figuring out. And, um, you know, as she's figure also figuring me out, she's like, who is this chick? I'm sure in her mind, like subconsciously, right? right? <laughs> so, you know, it made me feel, I-, I could understand more, just not so alone, not so different. And just, it gave me comfort. Well, it's, it's really interesting. Some of these different methods that are out there, you get one piece of information that, that uh, resonates with you. And it can be very, it can be very healing. Um, trying to think of a better word, um, assurance, um, mm-hmm. comfort, and that is is huge. It can play a huge part in the way you process everything. Yeah. Um. So when I did my past life regression, it was it was similar. You know, he was trying to lead me, or trying to get me to lead myself, kind of like he was lead, trying. Mm-hmm. Your person was trying to lead you through doors. Mine was, you know, had a pretty similar scenario and it seemed pretty stereotypical. I mean, I was not impressed with the imagery that I was getting. I, um, you know, I was kind of thinking to myself, okay, so when is this over? Um, And like your person, my person, he stuck with it. And then things started happening in a way that I knew it was not me just fabricating a story. Yeah. Uh, could you uh, see, did you have visuals? Uh, I, I, yeah, I could. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it became very vivid, very detailed. The story became unusual and inst- interesting and relevant. Uh-huh. And then in the end, um, I was a, blubbering mess on the floor yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah and then after we you know that took a while and then after we was done with that he was like do you want to do some more or do you want to keep on going I was like well I, let's keep on going so he took yes. me another another story another I guess lifetime mm-hmm. um 
you know, and the truth is, I, I don't know what it is, but my subconscious mind is attaching meaning to something, right? And it was important, whatever the story was. Right. Um, and after the second story, this, this whole process, again, it's kind of started pretty stereotypical in a war. Well, you know, I was a soldier and was not that impressive. And then it just got more and more detailed and, and, and it wasn't coming at that point. It wasn't my mind or it wasn't me creating the story. I mean, I would never, You've be never able to been in a this. war. Right. No, and I never be able to create this story. I mean, I'm, I'm not a writer. I'm not, that's not my thing. Um, the stuff that was coming out was very unusual. And then it hit me emotionally. And once again, I was a blubbering mess. And, and that the second time around, I, I just, you know, after some time went by, he's like, would you like me to take you, take you back? Um, I was staying at a hotel around the corner and I was like, no, man, no, man. I'm just, I'm going to walk there, man. And you know, I was just a mess walking down the road, completely just bawling. And I'm sure every car that was driving by just saw <laughs> this red, red faced kid that was a complete mess. Yeah. And it was interesting because to get into the hotel or the area where the hotel was, there were guards. And you can imagine this kid that's just bawling his whole shirts like wet. And the guards are looking at me. They're waiting for me to have some sort of pass if, if I were a car for the gates to open up. But I, you know, I was walking, so I just walked beside the gates. But they're all they're looking at me and I'm looking at them and I'm red faced. And it was all just very weird. But um my, you know, I, my subconscious resonated with it and I got rid of a lot of stuff. And you were talking about earlier, um, the weight of the world being lifted. Mm -hmm. Um, man, that was, uh, I just felt wonderful afterwards. And, you know, a lot of information came to me too. Um, and it cleared up a lot of, uh, questions that I had. So it, it, it was very real. Yeah. And when, you know, when you just said, um, that, you you resonated with it like emotionally like that's exactly like you could feel it like that is exactly how i the, that when that moment happened for me during is when i knew i was like i'm not making this up this is the real deal right. like as as the vision finally opened and i saw like my planet and my people my heart my the love that i felt was like I mean, it makes me almost right now, I could get like emotional because I, I felt it. I just felt, and I was so happy there. And my, you know what I mean? And like, and, and that's how I knew I'm like, this is real because I, it, it existed in my heart already. You know what I mean? Like it had, yeah. Right. Like it's not something that you create. It's just something you're pulling up something. Yeah. That you're remembering, you're remembering basically. So it, it's intense. Yeah. It's a good thing. Some weird stuff for sure, man. <laughs> I mean, lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm just going down your list here that you gave me. Shamanic healer um, in Peru. So I guess, did you go back to Peru again? Yes. Yeah, so after the ayahuasca, I, I was drawn to, to Peru and um, Cusco. There's this city in Peru. It's near Machu Picchu. OK. And um, so I was like, I got to go there. Um, one of the one of the facilitators, um, one of the uh, shaman facilitators um, on my um, retreat told me about it, told me about the city and was like, you need to go. Um, he's like you know, my energy is magical. And he's like this, the, the Cusco, um, the city itself has magic energy, magical being a Spanish, Spanish, but anyway. And, um, he was like, you need to feel that you need to experience this in your lifetime. You need to do this. So I said, okay. So, okay. Anyway, I went to this shamanic healer, um, who, uh, she does energy work, but she's, you know, also trained as a shaman, but really, you know, there's such a thing as shamanic Reiki, you know, there's all the different forms. There's angelic. We know this, right? Yes. yes all yes. these different varieties of, of Reiki. Hundreds, um, maybe thousands. There's yes, a lot. Yes. yes. So hers is a shamanic Reiki. And um, so, you know, I went to her um, and I just basically, you know, asked her 
to clear up anything that I may carry with me. So then she went into her, um, her method of, of getting there, which was like, uh, like a, a jerk. She had like a, I want to say a rattle. So like a maraca uh, of swords. Right. Yes. Um, so she would shake that and she went into her journey um, and like meditation, whatever, whatever, you know, you want to call it. But she, she was like, um, you know, are you in a relationship right now? And I was like, no, you know, my, my previous relationship had ended, you know, months before that. And, and, you know, and I, I did not recognize that I had had, you know, like I had gotten over it. You know what I mean? Like I had had not thought about that person. And so I did not recognize anything. So I was like, no, I'm not in a relationship. And she's, cause she, she asked me, are you sure? <laughs> yes, I'm quite sure. And she's like, listen, she's like, and I had heard this before. Um, and you know, through talking to other people, but she said, when we get into relationships with people, we can develop a cord to attach to that person, yes. you know, like, yeah, you've heard that too, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and she was like, you, you know, you know, you had a relationship with this person. She was like, you guys have developed the cord. And she was like, and though you, from your perspective, that cord, you know, is severed. She's like, he is not let that cord sever. She's like, in fact, when I went and I found him there, um, she's like, he almost tried to hide. Like he doesn't want, he's holding on. He, yeah, he's holding on and he, she said, he may still love you. And I was like, and you know, my response is I like, well, cut the cord. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't want anyone attached to me that I don't know that they're there. You know what I mean? Right, right. I, cut that cord. And she was like, okay. She's like, but you know, take something from that. Maybe there's something left on, you know, you should let him say to you, you know, cause all the, a lot of times we think about it only from our perspective, right? Well, I don't have anything to say to them. You know, it's over, blah, blah, blah. Well, maybe they have something to say to you, you know, maybe you should give them that chance. Hmm. And um, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And, and she was like, but anyway, so she's like, that was it. That was that part of that healing. But I had never, you know, thought about that in any way. And, and I had not identified that that cord still existed and didn't realize that even if it, one, one of us does cut it, the other person can still like, hold on. Yeah. There can still be that attachment. Um, but I mean, that makes total sense, you know, obviously. Um, I just had never thought about it like that. Yeah. There, um, I have, on Karma Hub, a cord cutting exercise. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, so, you know, you, you establish attachments to people and it's like an energetic connection. Um, and, and they happen quite easily and they happen all the time. Yeah. Um, and if you're really close with someone, um, it, it's probably there, <laughs> you know, yeah. or have been close with someone. It's, also probably there unless there's a complete sever and it's hard to get to that point. Um, but yeah, so uh, cord cutting is a, a very good practice mm -hmm. uh, from what I understand. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, and I, I guess you get acupuncture on a regular basis. Yeah. I like to plug acupuncture because, you know, so how do you find that different from Reiki? So when I'm describing Reiki, I'll, right. I'll, I'll tell you how I describe Reiki. Um, I, you know, I, I bring up acupuncture. And if they're familiar with acupuncture, most people are these days. Yeah. Um, it, it's the same ball of wax. You, you affect the energetic body. <laughs> um, and only Reiki is a little bit more bizarre because that you don't have to have physical contact. Right. Needles. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's no physical contact um, or th there doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. In fact, you don't even have to be on the same continent. So it can be even really super weird. I know. But it does the same thing. Yeah. It just, it, it can be a reset uh, for your energetic yeah. pathways in the body. 
Listen, I don't know. I, I don't, all I can say is this, my experience and my experience with acupuncture is that, you know, I, I do Reiki all the time. I mean, I have Reiki shares, you know, once a month. Um, and so that's a lot of energy once a month. You would think that, you know, anything, but there are some days and I am a big proponent of this. I just listen to my body and what my body tells me I need. And a lot of the times I hear go to acupuncture. And so I do. And Lauren, like, I feel like a million dollars and I don't know what it is. You know, it, I don't know if it's the specific points uh, with acupuncture. I mean, obviously it is the specific points, but you know, it's a good compliment to Reiki. You know, I've, I've gone to acupuncture, um, when I had a cold and legitimately, like I, I had a cold, I walked in and she asked me, and I think I'd gone there for some other reason, but I said, listen, I woke up today. I have a cold. She's like, okay, I'm not kidding you. She put a needle in my, I guess, lymph node. I felt the cold break up. Like uh, as soon as she put the needle in, uh, cause I went like this on the chair. Cause I felt like this burst. Okay. I'm not, n- I'm not kidding you. And then I was like, I said to her, I was like, Whoa, I was like, I think you got the cold. And she's like, are you okay? And I said, yeah. She said, hold on. She said, hold on, just breathe. She put her hand right here, right on my third eye. Hold on, just breathe. I did. She finished placing the needles in me. I walked out of there. I had no cold. I had zero cold, like nothing. I was fine. And not to mention whatever else I had gone in there for. You know what I mean? So I like to plug acupuncture because I think a lot of people, you know, they don't try it. I don't know what the reason, but I'm like, it's just such a good compliment to everything else. Um, And it's just, it's so, it's just been so good to me that that's why I liked it because it's just worked wonders for me in so many ways. So, I mean, obviously you've done a lot of searching. Yeah. Like, how do you feel like this has affected you? Like, how is this, has it done anything for you in, in terms of I mean, growth? Think, or do you just consider yourself an explorer? I mean, I definitely am an explorer and I will continue and I like to grow. But the theme that keeps coming up is, you know, a lot of us feel alone, you know, like, you know, in my family, I'm the only one that I'm the weird one, right? You know, like, these are my weird things. Like, so you know, I can't relate to my family about that. And, and, and if I do talk about it, a lot of times I'm made fun of, you know, stuff like that. So like that can lead to a feeling of loneliness, but I think what's important to, you know, and why, it, why this in particular, this video is important and talking is important is to let people know that you're not alone. There are other people, maybe they're not in your immediate family and maybe you're not lucky enough to, you know, be able to have friends Uh, you know, that are right there that you can talk to about it, but we are out here. um, And, you know, you're just, you're not alone. You know, you're not alone in that experience. And I think that's important.